Hi, in this slide, I want to carry on, uh, extend my story from 1976 and turn it around Paper Distributors Inc. KC, which incidentally, we dramatically improved profitability and put the company on a new higher sales trajectory, getting lots more share of 100 accounts that mattered as opposed to 900 tiny little guys that were growing nowhere that we just accumulated over 80 years of business uh, from previous owners. Um, but back in those days, my thinking went something along like, like this. Now you can see this is sort of a maintenance, repair, and operating uh, supply distributor. Uh, and these are real numbers, actually. Uh, a distributor was doing this much in sales on an annual basis on, out of 23,000 plus transactions. So if you divide 23,000 into sales, margin dollars, and expenses, and profit, these are the no average numbers you get over here. 420 in sales per transaction, 104 in margin dollar per transaction, Nine, less 97 expenses gives you $6.72 per transaction. The question is, what if we got one more order that had $200 of sales in it at 25%? That's $50 in margin. Would we say, well, truly, one more order, we have $104 of cost to take care of an order, so we lost $64 and change on that order. We say, wait a minute, wait a minute, not so fast. We have fixed costs and variable costs, and sort of variable costs. So the fixed costs are like the warehouse rent and a corporate GNA that gets stuck to a branch, which is huge. Uh, you've got people who aren't involved in the order transaction activity directly, that would be, gee, the phones are ringing, answer them, take the order, inside sales, okay, triggers, order pulling in the warehouse, pick pack, put it on a truck, deliver it, bill it, process the paperwork, et cetera. That is, you know, that goes up and down variably with, with transactional activity. But even purchasing goes up and down with transactional activity because we can't do all the picking in the warehouse if we aren't continually replenishing. Uh, so arguably, we'd have to put purchasing in there as part of the variable cost. And then we might say, well, hey, the branch manager, what percent of their time do they spend fooling around with suppliers, which makes the purchasing allocation costs go up, which feeds into variable? Or what percent of the time fooling around with customers to generate order flow, which would say, well, you know, we have to sort of put allocate some of that into to customer activity. It, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a debatable thing. But we could say, well, maybe uh, arguably to be simplistic, uh, let's say certainly we know for sure that we have $50 more in incremental transactional activity costs for one more order. Just the, all the paperwork, follow it all the way through, and you'd say that that's, that's a no-brainer. Arguably, you could get up to 78 and say $50 in margin is already a loser. Fix, fixed costs, at least fixed for right now, could be 45 or or lower. But the problem is we don't have just one more small order. When I first did my analysis back in 1976, uh, one branch had about 24,000 transactions a year. The bottom 10,000, I just ranked them all by margin dollar per transaction. The bottom 10,000, the bottom 40% of all the transactions had less than 5% of the margin dollars and no brainer just pure variable incremental cost was a magnitude of 10, 11, 12 points uh, of our cost structure. And very quickly, I could start to realize that there were other distractive costs that distracted uh, honchos, purchasing people, certainly outside salespeople from taking care of the customers that mattered. So at any rate, that's how we got the courage to sort of say, you know, let's look at these guys more carefully and realize that 95% of all these, all these little guys, guys were self-employed creatures who hadn't grown in the last five, six, 10 years. They weren't going to grow in the next 10 years based on who they were and what they were thinking and not doing and so forth. And we had a service model where the cost to serve exceeded the margin dollars they really could give us. So we needed to unbundle freight we needed to pretty much unbundle trade credit. And today you'd go to credit cards or cash. If they want to come down and pick it up, that would you know lower the minimum orders. We'd raise prices. There are a number of things you can do as far as prices and terms and unbundling for fees that allow you going forward to either make money on them or if they want to leave and paralyze a full service competitor doesn't know any better, that's okay. But the ones that stay will order more less often and on a profitable basis. And that allows us particularly to get to work on, on uh, 
turning around the lose-lose accounts and getting more share and, and uh, taking the win-win guys up to a big guys up to a much higher level. End of the slide. Thank you.